Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our presentation. My name is Claire Pallier, and I would like to present you Softworks, a real-time technique enabling two-way interactions between a character and loose ground. So I'm going to take care of the first part of this presentation, and my colleague Eduardo Alvarado is going to take care of the second part. So in computer graphics, we want a scene to be plausible. So of course, the character's movements are essential to it, but we also noticed that the interactions between characters and the direct environment, such as the ground, are very important too. Unfortunately, standard game engines do not easily provide for simple and real-time interactions, and neither does the literature in character animation. The state of the art in character animation is quite plentiful, but not with methods that are both easy to implement and real-time. The most beautiful results recently were given by some deep learning techniques. For example, Peng and colleagues worked on Deep Mimic, which is using reinforcement learning to produce some complex acrobatics. These techniques uh, are well suited for rigid environments and obstacles, but do not scale well to natural environments with, for example, multiple um, loose materials and soft interactions. Recently, Holden and colleagues published face function neural networks for character control, which also gives some very convincing results, but it's using classical deep learning and so needs a lot of data. So these data also need to exist. So if we want, for example, in a video game to create an imaginary environment, then it won't be able to train us on such data. So there are also some procedural approaches. Historically, Yin and colleagues worked on the very, very well-known Symbicon. It's part of a big family of controller-based uh, techniques. So these techniques actually have several controllers for each limb that enable uh, the animator to have control on every movement of the character, which isn't the case with the deep learning uh, techniques. But what we want to do is to have something more simple. So we got inspired by the work of Mitake and colleagues that they published in 2009. And the idea is to have one high-level controller for the whole movement of the character. And some other work uh, go to the same direction as ours, like the work of Bermudez and colleagues, who published on real-time locomotion with character fluid interactions. And so this work, as the one we, we produced, is more simple and uses a high-level controller with some physics simulation to produce some real-time results. So usually in game engines, characters have several layers. So they can have a capsule collider, a rigged skeleton, and they can also have a rigid body simulation that gives the global position and orientation of the character. So our idea was to use this layered structure of characters to create a layered model for character motion. So at a high level, our first layer is a global controller for the rigid body simulation to add some swinging to the motion and some balance to the gait of the character. Then at a lower level, the height map is deformed according to an accurate positioning of the feet, thanks to some ray casting and some inverse kinematics. And altogether, this gives some consistent interactions between a walking character and its direct surrounding environment. If we use a character that has a preset walking animation, for example, and inverse kinematics, it will be able to climb a slope. But it will have a static motion and it won't adapt its gait to the slope of the terrain. So what we propose is to use a single controller to apply a torque to the rigid body simulation of the character. So here on the image, you can see several elements. First, you can see the two black disks that represent the projection of the feet on the slope of the terrain. So here we are working fully in 2D, and so we use that plane that you can see on the image. This segment between the two black dots is the support polygon, and what we want is a projection of the center of mass of our character to be in the middle of that support polygon. So the goal projection of the center of, ma of mass is a red dot, and the actual projection of the center of mass is a yellow dot. So that's why the first term of our torque is a distance between these two points. So we want this distance to be as small as possible, and we also add another term that is the current angular velocity of our character to control the oscillations of the character. Here you can see some results. So both characters have an inverse kinematic system and a preset walking animation. The difference is that the blue character has the torque I just described applied to its rigid body simulation, while the red one hasn't. 
So on the left, on the image, you can see that when climbing up a slope, our character in blue tilts more forwards than the red one, and when climbing down, it tilts more backwards. On the right, on the video, you can also see that our blue character has a swinging motion that the red character doesn't have. So it makes the gait more natural and it also adds more balance to the character since it always comes back to its equilibrium point in the middle of the support polygon. The ground plays an important role in the movement of the character. In this layer, inspired by the work of Samenen in 1999, we not only focus on the impact that the character's movement can have on the terrain, but also on the influence that its deformation has on the character's gait. To do this, we procedurally compute the footprints caused by the characters on the height map of the terrain. A raycasting method uses a 2D grid to detect which nodes in the height map are in contact with the foot, and then we perform a terrain displacement according to this classification. The deformation on the terrain T is parameterized using three scalars. First, we have a depth coefficient d sub t, which defines the height that we need to remove, such that, for example, smaller relics correspond to harder terrains. Then we have a compression coefficient c sub t that defines the amount of compression the ground material can hold. Materials with a larger content in air or water would have a higher compressibility than, for example, dry sand. And then we have a smoothness coefficient s sub t that defines a smoother appearance of the height map with a Gaussian filter. Finally, the inverse kinematic system in charge of positioning the feet with respect to the ground makes the character adapt automatically based on the deformation. The ground material adapts dynamically to the shape of the feet according to its parametrization. In the case of dry sand and soil, a smaller compression and depth coefficients carves the ground around the foot without going too deep into the material. More smoothness is achieved as well using a larger smoothness coefficient. For materials with larger amount of water such as mud or snow, we can generate deeper and sharper footprints by increasing both depth and compression coefficients. At the same time, the gait of the character is adapted automatically based on the terrain and the deformations that are being generated. Our method works as well with dense surrounding elements, like vegetation. The goal is to model the impact of the character's movement on loose elements and reciprocally to compute what could be the return influence on the walking gait of the character. First, we calculate the deformation t procedurally based on the distance between the loose element and the character, which decreases linearly between the character's foot and the position of the element. Secondly, we model the effect that these surrounding elements have on the character's walking style. We humans tend to raise our knees higher and land our foot more abruptly when we walk within dense vegetation, since we cannot accurately perceive the actual distance from our feet to the ground, but only rolly estimated. To capture the nature of this behavior, we model the perceived ground using a set of virtual platforms under the feet. They are controlled procedurally such that during the different foot motion phases, the platform uplifts or lowers down the foot accordingly. Finally, the platform falls down quickly, leading to a sudden adjustment on the character's feet onto the actual ground. Not only the terrain defines the style of the character's motion, but also the vegetation. The grass is procedurally deformed based on the distance to the character. Then, a set of virtual platforms are used as inverse kinematic targets to carry the feet upward and downward during the different phases to model the inaccurate ground perception. In our work, we propose a system to enrich real-time character animation in order to handle two-way interactions in natural environments. Although this method offers a simple approach to the task we seek to solve, there are a number of aspects that we would like to consider in order to achieve a more general solution. Our system, for example, does only model straight motions within small terrains. We would like to extend our work for adapting the character's balance to orthogonal motion directions, which could involve as well extending our controller for 2D dimensions. We want to adapt our system to be general enough to handle more complex cases, not only for humans, but also for any other type of morphology, as well as for more motion types like running or climbing. For the terrain deformation, we are aiming to improve the system by including modifications based on, for example, the morphology of the character, such as its weight or contact area between the foot and the ground. Also, we work on a more extensive parametrization of the terrain properties. In the case of the vegetation, we are working on a wider variety of plastic and elastic deformations, as well as impacts on the character's movement. Additionally, new control layers for other body parts, like the arms, could improve as well local and global adaptations. And that's everything. 
thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions of course please don't hesitate to ask us